Hello everyone, welcome to the lab today. So today is another episode of me covering uh, more of the fundamental basic knowledges of Yu-Gi-Oh! or competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! at this point, where <laughs> today is actually the most excited, most important part of the game right now, where majority of the other TCG really doesn't have as much as this which is hand traps, as you see in the thumbnail. Uh, as we all know, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game where you do a crazy amount, maybe even sometimes more things in your opponent's turn than in your, in your own turn, compared to like at least the, the TCGs I've known, like Magic and Pokemon. Um, yu gi oh are very special games, and uh, what like, made it happen are just mainly the hand traps. And there's like a long, long history of hand traps since the game was really born. Like, I don't even know which one will probably be the, old, the oldest hand trap. It's probably Gores, in, if I remember correct. Either Gores or the Ecro, to be honest. And um, those cards are play like a bigger, bigger and bigger role with now like how the modern Yu-Gi-Oh is. So I think it's a it's a good opportunity for me to just cover not all the hand traps, but I won't be able to cover all of them, but at least a decent amount of them that maybe or maybe was being played or maybe is being played now, or maybe you need to know once it's being played in the future. So without further ado, let's just start with some of the hand traps. I have all the piles ready. Start with the first one. The first one are the hand traps. <laughs> That's sort of a little bit outdated already. Because these are the battle hand traps. <laughs> yeah, these, these are old. These are far gone from the, the game already. Like, you're barely going to see any of these being played. Like, Jack Frost was probably the one that's being played... The mole in like the most recent, I think someone tried it in like spiral format where you can out um, a sleeper, a, sl a spiral sleeper that cannot be targeted or it cannot be destroyed. So, so you can just put it face down without targeting it, it's something good. But overall, all these are long gone in the history, they're like. <laughs> the tears. If if you've been playing the game for old enough, like these will all all of these will bring back your memories for sure. So yeah, these are the outdated battle hand traps. Very unfortunately, but they did have something in the history. If anyone interested, they can Google Google it, search what they've done, what they've accomplished in the past. Next is the very excited, because we have the most debatable hand traps in the entire game, in the entire OCG and TCG, Maxi, <laughs> and uh, his families. Uh, there's a couple more C cards. There's like Shining Black C, whatever other ones. But I think the one that had impact or so, like contact didn't have an impact to any format, but it's like an errata of Flying C. And the Flying C, both Flying and Retaliating has impact in some format before well let's start with the most controversial one the maxi it's a uh, it's a long debate i'm not gonna <laughs> talk too much about it card says you activate this card whenever your opponent has special summon one you draw a card and uh w this video is not about it's not just pure debate of should maxi come back to the game or not or should also you ban maxi or not However, <laughs> that, that could be like another different video in the future if uh, Maxi actually comes back. But yeah, this one is currently banned in TCG and uh, we have uh, absolutely no idea when it will come back. The rest are very interesting ones. Flying C says, when your opponent's special or normal special monster, you could just special this to your opponent's board. And as long as your opponent controls this card, they cannot exceed summon. However, this card was printed way long time ago, before obviously before the link rules. Now, since almost everyone has link monster in their extra deck, and uh, also everyone like almost everyone, almost no one play a pure Xyz decks. 
So this core is just like dead. It's not really even playable anymore because your opponent can just you just give them a free link material by activating this. That's why they Konami reprint like a kind of an errata version of Contact C. Says it has the same triggering condition where if your opponent summons anything, you get to throw it to their board, and whenever they doing any per perform uh, any summon from your opponent uh, from from the extra deck, they have to use Contact C. So it's like sometimes it does lock something in weird situations. Like this was played the only time it was played it was in a BA format after Cherubini was out in OCG, where the purpose was even more just to clear the BA monster, because the BA monster dies when there's non BA on the field. It's not really like just to lock the lock their summons, to be honest. But like these this is also probably just gone from the history, and this is just because of how the format is, it's also not really playable. Retaliating is a like, I'll say the best, the best C uh, that's existing currently. By the time this video is being recorded, because Max C will obviously be the best, but it's not in the format. Uh, retaliating says whenever your opponent activates a spell that says special summon, you get to special summon this card to your own board, and while this card is special summoned by this effect. It will apply macrocosmos. Everything that was sent to graveyard get banished. So it's a very, very good answer to any possible fusion or ritual strategy. Because as we all know, both fusion, fusion, majority of them require fusion spells. Ritual, majority of them require ritual spells. They, no matter what happens, are spells that special summons. So you can always change your retaliate C. And respond to your uh, respond to your opponent's either fusion or ritual spells, and usually how fusion and ritual decks function is they benefit from not only just summoning the ritual or fusion monster, they also get benefit from their materials being fused or being tributed for the ritual. Retiring majority of time can just cut the can just cut their like the, the the tribute part or the fusion material part away because majority of them are also required to, like. It is sent to give it to trigger the effect, to trigger the benefit. And uh, retaliating also has a weird second effect where if this card is sent from the field to give you, you get to search a earth insect monster that's 1500 or less attack. So essentially, it searches all the entire C family. Obviously, the best target is to search Maxi, but very unfortunate we don't have it. Like, I wish, I wish uh, we were like OCG so we could do that combo. But yeah, these are like kind of the relevant C cards. It's a um, maxi. If you have the like extra money, it's not bad to just get some just in case if it actually comes back in the future. Retiring is something good to have. Uh, flying contact, you can just ignore it for now. Like from from these majority of the hand traps, um, you can like from from the first row probably only retiring. It's something you need to get, like, a playset just in case. And uh, Maxi, if you think it's going to come back, because the price will definitely hype, like, spike to very high uh, if it comes back. So it's not, like, it's a decent small investment if you really want to just do it preemptively. Then the next are... Next are just the ones that's, like... Most famous, the Gold Sisters in the whole game right now. That's like the six hand traps in the past, what, two, three years? That's warping the entire game because they are all absurd hand traps. Uh, just also because these are absurd hand traps, they have a very high demand in the entire game. Therefore, these all get reprinted in like very, like in several different places. Uh, so it, I think all these five got reprinted in one of the Dual Devastator, I think was the name, was an Alter Art, and they're all relatively cheap. Chill, I think, it chose the most re uh, recent one, so it didn't get reprinted. Uh, but it probably will in, in the future. I think Ghost here is actually reprinted. That's, that's coming in like a month or two. So these cards, it's a big recommendation to just get a play set of all of them. Because you're going to need those in at some point. Like, Ash, you almost all, can always play a place in your deck and will almost never be terrible. 
it's not necessarily the best hand trap to play in every format, but it's always it was almost never the worst hand trap to play, and it can always some sometimes just slide in your deck. Uh, Ogre is a card. Oh, Ogre and Cherry, also Bell are cards where if the, it's the format, they can be very good, or if it's not the format, they can just absolutely be paper. It's not doing anything. Uh, but it's also just like. This like the point of this video is to make sure whoever's watching have a basic knowledge of all the hand traps and a good recommendation is just to get a place of every single hand trap existing that I mentioned that's not outdated already just to prepare yourself if you are trying to get more competitive in, in Yu-Gi-Oh right now because these are just needed these are just <laughs> these are like <laughs> imagine playing Yu-Gi-Oh like just like surviving then these are Oxygen. That's you just need to play the game. <laughs> so yeah, um Dagu is a special one. Uh by the current TCG rules, when it's still the end of the current phase, uh, when time is called, this card could be shine in like some gimmicky if you are trying to win it that way, you can you can tag this card on your side. If not, then this card is uh slightly worse than every other five. Chilj is another copy like Vader, if I Vader and Perm, where I'll be covering in a minute, where it negates on summon, uh, it negates a monster on, on its summon. Uh, the funny part is, other than Imperm of Vader, this actually negates something that can be, that's special something in your turn, such as like your opponent Shadal, uh, either Schism or El Shadal Fusion into a window in your turn. Your opponent IP into a unicorn in your in your turn, then you can you can just throw this and negate it, negate it in your turn. While neither Vader or majority of time Perm couldn't really do it. Dago, like go back to Dago. Dago is sometimes in when there's like time is very close. It's like the absurd call because your opponent just can't do anything. Otherwise, they give you free life points. But and <laughs> that's only happening when there's like less than three minutes on the clock. Where you're gonna be play the first thirty seven the majority of the time. So if you can't get a play set, but don't expect it to use it that much. Next one is the new kind of new popular one, the side frames. Uh side frames in like all them together, well except this guy. We we all hate this. <laughs> the side frames says if you control no monsters and your opponent do something. You get to special summon the corresponding one plus the driver from anywhere on your position, deck, hand, or graveyard. And uh, after that, negate whatever you want to activate it. Gamma says monster effects, Delta says spell, Epsilon says trap. Uh, I think, yeah, Gamma just got a recent reprint in Toon Chaos as a rare. So now all these ciphering cards, at least the one like you need as a hand trap, not just pure ciphering. Now the the thing only you need for hand traps are relatively cheap and very easy accessible. So it's not necessarily these are like the good answers. Like Epsilon and Delta were relatively not being played at all, but they are still just like good thing to get because they are just like maybe one day well, right? Uh, Epsilon being played a little bit more because it re uh, it can stop like if you play a pendulum strategy and your opponent flip like anti spell on you during a standby phase, you can Epsilon them. And uh, stop it. And uh, the quick, the tricky part about all the side frames, also the Gold Sisters, is like they all tuners. So as we, by the time this video is recorded, uh, we know Christian Christian Hockey Fibrex is uh, is still in existing. And uh, like in your turn, if a Gamma get, getting triggered, that's just a free fiber for any possible combo plays you want to do. And uh, so does the Ghost Sisters. I'll also cover cards like later in this video about what possible like what possible cards in other decks that can you can abuse their types or um, their tuner aspects. So next one are just the the generic ones or sort of relatively generic ones. Vader, Imperm, Skullmeister, DD Crow, Psycho Reader, and Drone Lockbird. Uh, Vader and Imperm, these are like kind of the big the big duel for it's being it can be playing almost everything in almost every format because negate a monster fight is almost always good. 
Uh, Vader as being a level one light tuner can be used in a lot of like, like this can be a one for one target. This can also be used in like a lot of chaos strategies, uh, which is pretty neat. Impern is one of those few trap hand traps, like a real trap. Uh, it's good because it's a trap. So the usual anti hand trap card usually doesn't work on it. It's also bad because it's a trap because it can, it's like, it has still has the trap aspect. So it can be countered by specific, some specific weight. And it also it's only negate means it's relatively a weaker uh, negate and interruption in general. So, oh, also forgot to mention, Vader is also a spellcaster. So the spellcaster part can also happens in a lot of like, Link plays like there's a very um, fundamental play now. It's fiber into Vader into selling then selling the Vader back into Axis. So that's a very cool thing for Vader and Imperm. The next three are Skullmeister, Crow, and Psycho Reader. Those are relatively the graveyard related one. Like people usually compare Vader Imperm with Chill and Ash because these two are sort of kind of focusing on the same thing usually. Like stopping monsters on the board to activate that. Now, Ash is a little bit more like versatile because it covers more, like even spells that search or not. Uh, these three are usually more compared with Bell because they all kind of graveyard related thing. Uh, some people may be not really familiar with Psycho Reader. It's a DD Crow, but Banish 2, but only work on light monsters. So imagine there's like. Um, for example, we in the history there uh, there was a blue eyes format where DD Curry can only banish one, but Psycho Reader can just banish two. For situations like your opponent like trading and cost, card confidence sends some like dragons in the graveyard, and now they're trying to reborn it with like Moss Reborn or whatever thing. DD Crow can just DD Crow, yes, it can just banish the blue eyes they try to revive, but Psycho Reader can also just ban not only banish the blue eyes they try to revive, maybe another like lie, like another dragon in their graveyard, causing more damage. So this is like a format specific DD Crow, but when it's being when it's able to being used, it's doing double of DD Crows. That's why. Uh also it says up to up to two lights. So worst case, it just uh if you only hitting a light monster, it's the same as DD Crow. Now, Skullmeister is a slightly different. It's a relatively old hand trap compared to a lot of the new age one. Uh, it negates anything activate in the graveyard, any card, and unlike majority, like the Ghost Sisters, they all hard once per turn, Skullmeister isn't. And the Skullmeister has stats very weirdly among, like, you see, all the second row are just, you can ignore all of them, they're all, all of their attack. Like, all the Ghost Sister has zero attack. <laughs> all the siphons cannot be normal summons, so even they have 1k attack, it usually doesn't even matter. But And you can see all these hand traps here are like 1k or lower, or maybe even zero. Skullmaster has a weird 1700 attack and it actually can be over something. That happened to me before. And uh, like Crow, Meister, and Bell are usually the graveyard trio for, uh, for like hand traps that covers graveyard. Uh, so yeah, and that's just the graveyard thing. Uh, usually, when a format where graveyard is heavily being involved, you will have to think about all these three together uh, and think about which one apply to what kind of situations. What kind of situation only uh, only works with like either one or either two uh, uh, hand traps among these three. For example, like during April, there was like a pure outlitch kind of slightly dominating the format and all these three hand traps covers like some different things but they all cover like different um for example uh scarlet uh scar the elixir of scarlet sanguine it's a graveyard can be covered by all uh by crow and uh maestro but it's on field if i can only be covered by bell so therefore there's like a slightly difference between all these d3 hand traps even they are all graveyard related so you just have to think what kind of which one will be better for the format be be against like even more detailed decks or detailed situations. 
Next one for the generic section is draw. Draw is usually compared with Maxi and Ash. Like draw is a car, a hand trap, sort of just the TCG version of Maxi. Since we can't draw more cards while your opponent doing things, let's just pre let's just say neither of us drawing anything. <laughs> so if I can plus, I'm making sure while I'm not plusing, I'm forcing you also not plusing. It's just how draw it is. Uh, this like in some format where search is very dominant than special summon, then draw is a very good. There's a very like infamous combo which called draw reincarnation that <laughs> hopefully you never experienced it. If if you do, then I'm sorry. Then if you do, I'm sorry for a childhood. But yeah, these are the relatively generic hand traps. That's not the one that I already covered. Next ones are the kind of sort of banish related hand traps. Um let me see. Lancia says you activate your opponent's turn, then neither player can banish. Chaos Hunter says you want your opponent to special summon, you get to pitch a card to special summon this. When this card's on the field, your opponent cannot banish cards. And D Shifter says if you have nothing in the graveyard, you can activate this. Now everything get banished. So these three are just all like banish related hand traps. Which, in some specific case, they're actually very good. Like, Lancia is being heavily played in an Orcus format. Because every single Orcus monster has to banish it to activate its effect. D-Shifter is being played in Thunder Dragons to counter, counter everything else in the format. Because Thunder Dragon actually get benefit from being banished. Oh, also, D-Shifter applied for two turns. So, D-Shifter kind of has, like, a very big drawback where... Um, you can only use it when you have nothing in the graveyard. And by the time you use it, you send it to graveyard so you can no longer activate another one in the future. So it's like a very specific turn one card. But And the other downside is since it's a banish, since it's a apply macro for two turns, by the time you get your first turn, your cards will also get banished. That's why this card is like very, very limited in the decks that it can play. But whenever it's being resolved, it's always the most devastating one. That's possible. Yeah, Chaos Thunder is just like a slightly different version of Lancia. It does summon itself to be a big body, but because it, it it's like it's good because it summons itself to become a big body. It's also bad because it summons itself. Now it can be counter like like chill is just an answer to Chaos Hunter. Your opponent can just mean like mean deck like Forbidden Droplet, and usually it's dead going first, but now they can just use it on it. So, eh, it has its weird, like, situations of the format. So, it's it's always, like, a good consideration to think about whether it's going to be good or not. It's probably, like, slightly worse than Lancia, but you don't you don't limit to, like, play either or. You can just play both. You can play, like, three Lancia, then one or two, two Chaos Center. Just think it's, like, the fourth or fifth copy of it. So, yeah, that's, like, a, like... None of these hand really conflicting each other. You can always have, like, there's a long debate before Chill came out. It's like, whether Chill is going to be better than Imperm Vader or not. The answer is no, but no one's preventing you running either or, right? So you can just run all of them. Now you have nine of them. Next ones are, um, like, the combo stoppers, if I really characterize them. Uh, Nibiru? No material, token collector, Gizma Uka, like combined with the barrier statue. Uh, Nibiru, one of the most, one of the craziest hand trap that's ever been printed. According to Farfa, imagine a sphere mode that's a quick play, that's a hand trap, right? It's <laughs> whenever your opponent special summon five or more monster this turn. You get to activate, tribute everything on the board, special summon, give your opponent a token, offer a handshake, and say, go home, build a better deck. That's usually how it does. Um, and uh, just because TCG doesn't have max C, Nibiru is essentially just one of the strongest format in at least the current meta, where if, if Nibiru resolves, it usually just stops 
whatever combo your opponent's doing. All the combo decks, they are working right now because they have a specific answer to to the Nibiru either force it out or have a backup plan after they being they got Nibiru. The, so that's why you can even think Nibiru is so good to a point every single combo deck has to respect it and have a plan with it to even play. Otherwise, they just get destroyed. Like you, there's a lot of like sleeping combo decks existing, but they probably all getting destroyed by Nibiru. That's why they're just not going to be seen in the competitive meta. So that's Nibiru. No Material is also a relatively recent one. Because No Material says if you control no cards and your opponent special summon a monster, you get to discard this to target one of your opponent's monster. That monster fizzle there. Stay, stand there for the turn. Cannot be used as any material and cannot be used, cannot be tributed, cannot be used as a fusion link, um, fusion link, synchron, and because it cannot be tributed, it cannot be as a tribute material, it cannot be ritual summon because it ritual tributes. So it just fizzled there. Uh, it works on some specific strategy. It's a very, very specific, format specific card. You have to really think what kind of situation it will be useful to make this card good. Otherwise, it's like a slightly worse version of almost every other hand trap you can play. But if you like plan out the situation very well, this could just be game ending because they just they just can't finish the combo because they want their most important combo piece just cannot be used and it's locked on the field. Uh, token collector is a one that's been popular in the very recent months. Uh, it says whenever a token is being summoned. Uh, either either player's turn at any point, you get to special summon card from either your hand or even in your graveyard. So this is also one of those hand traps where it even works when it's in the graveyard already. Uh, and uh, after it's being summoned, it destroys all the tokens on the field and gains some attacks that's irrelevant. That's 400 each, I think, which usually doesn't get really big and because it usually dies. And, um, and as long as token collector is on the field, uh, neither player can summon tokens. So, if you are not familiar with why this card is, like, how the current format is by the time this video is being recorded, F Needle Fiber uh, is existing, along with Link Cross. Link Cross, a card on summon, generate as many tokens as according to what Link, like, it uses as material. Usually, use a Link 2, so summon two, two level 1 tokens for free for Synchro Summon. And there's another card called uh, Mecha, Mecha Phantom Beast Aurora Dom that on summon it summons three level three tokens. So these are essentially one of the, if not one of the best cards in the current existing format. And uh, token collector just stops them. It kills every tokens and prevent any tokens being summoned. That's why this card is being played that much in the current token generating combo format. And uh, maybe like one once we maybe Konami ban like Link Cross or um, Link Cross off Orodon, then this card will probably just not being played at all because nothing generates tokens anymore. But by the time it, it exists, by the time all these cards exist, then this is one of their one of the best good answers to it. Next is the Gizma Fox. It's also a relatively if not the most recent hand trap, it actually is. It's the most recent hand trap. It says, whenever your opponent special summon a monster from their main deck, you get to special summon this. And whenever this card summon it, uh, you get to target a monster your opponent controls and special summon a monster from either your hand or deck with equal attack defense, uh, equal attack and defense that's the same attribute as your opponent's monster that you targeted. It's a very complicated one. The second, like the first time you hear or you read it, it is. I got confused as well at the beginning. <laughs> but in general, it just says whenever your opponent needle fiber, it brings out a tuner from the deck. You get to spell summon this and use this to target their fiber to summon a water statue 
or almost any barrier statue, but just because Neofiber is a water, so you summon a water statue from the deck. The water statue or any other barrier statue combined with this card, well, you can, like, depends on the format, you can change it to a different attribute, but now it's only water. Uh, water statue says only a water monster can be special summoned, and there's not really many water decks in the current format. Therefore, by you doing this on the Needle Fiber, you can just shut down their turn because they cannot special summon anymore. They don't have any water monster. So yeah, that's why this card is being played a little bit. It's like a very niche hand trap, to be honest. But once it's resolved, it could be very devastating. So yeah, just, just know about it. Last one. Our, can't really call it how these hand traps are really. Because they all like doing weird things in a very weird way. Majority of people already guess what one of them is. Because uh, it's a very popular one that I haven't really covered. Uh, Fantas. It's a hand trap that doesn't really... Does a, it's like the one of the least hand trap hand trap. That says, when your opponent links, special summon link monster, you get to special summon this. Then you draw cards equal to the amount of link monster they control plus one. Then you put how many link monster they control the amount of cards back to the deck. So essentially, when you put in some one link monster, you draw two, then you shuffle back one. It's even more, I even sometimes view this card as more like a draw engine instead of like a hand trap. But it does help you draw into majority of the hand trap that can that, that can combo with it. Like, because you only have three copies of the Nibiru that you can play, you can play three Fantas during Nibiru and hope you Fantas draw into the Nibiru. Since the is just so devastating to the format, right? And uh, also has an unfeel effect. It's like a level 7 dragon with 2400 attack. And its effect is whenever your monster get targeted by your opponent, you get to pitch a card to negate the activation of it. So you can even protect yourself from like a Vader or Chill, those kind of hand trap next turn if it survived. So it's like this really not... It's like a, one of those least hand trap hand trap. Its purpose is more just to draw the other hand trap that's more dominant to the format, that's more impactful to the format, but you are limited to play only three copies. Like, OCG had a time where you just play Fantas and you hope join to your maxi if you didn't open with it. TCG is like, you use Fantas to join to Nibiru, which is an idea. Next uh, is Typhoon. It's a weird one. It's a trap. If you're not familiar with it, if you control no spell trap and your opponent controls two or more spell trap on the field, you can activate this in your hand, then destroy a face-up spell trap on the field. So this is really like more an out to a lot of floodgates, usually. But in a pendulum format, this just become another hand trap. Like if we somehow have Endymion dominating the format, then you can really just hitting their scales. Because when you go second, you usually don't have back rows. And uh, whenever your opponent play Pendulum Strategy, they need two Pendulum Scales in their pendulum, uh, in their Spell Trap Zone. That actually triggers this condition. So you can always use this to, do to, to like clear their scales and like interrupt them. It's a very like... <laughs> you can even just say it's not really even a hand trap. But because we haven't had a Pendulum Format for a while. But once we do, it might be something kind of... Could be like a very good tag that you can just remember existing. That that's it. Next one, it's getting it's getting even weird. Uh, what kinetic puppeteer? A lot of people probably never even seen this card. It has the ver <laughs> it says quick effect. You can discard. You can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard. Target monster your opponent controls. Move it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You heard it right move it to a different zone that's empty. So, um, well, it moves. It, 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 it tell your opponent's monster to dance around. Then that's, that, that's, that's what it does. Uh, majority of the time, it really doesn't even matter because, uh, it's still the same monster. It just in a different spot. Then that doesn't change much. Right. But in a very weird format, like it happened in the history, where 
Sky Striker, they required their whole main monster zone to be empty to activate its effect, to activate all their spells. And this can <laughs> very annoyingly do uh, stopping their strategy by moving their one monster from their extra dot zone to their main monster zone that essentially essentially do shut down all their spells. So uh, yeah, it's a very niche pick, but just no exists. It's still a hand trap <laughs> by definition. Then there's a even more weird one. It's not, I don't even really view this core as a hand trap. Yes, you see it, right? It's even a ritual monster. It's not even an effective monster anymore, right? We can have some traps being like a weird hand trap. We, there's no other, like, nothing except an effect monster. Well, that's not really one, so ignore that. This is a ritual monster. It says, if one of your monsters um, get, get targeted by your opponent's card or effect, you can discard this? Wait, let me see. Yeah, when... Oh, when monsters get targeted by your opponent's card or effect, you can discard this to negate the activation. That's it, as, as its hand effect. So it's like... Uh, it's a... It's a, it's a hand trap that protects... Is that really a trap at that point? But it does stop your opponent's action and from the hand, by definition, I guess it is. So, I still include it. There's no exists. Uh, it's also a, a fun fact because it's like the most relevant kind of, you can use the, you can abuse the ritual factor of the card. Since Herald of Arclight is a card being quite uh, abused in the current format. And whenever her sent to give you, you get to trigger and search this for almost free. So if you do have it, it's a it's a fun thing to to have. Uh that's essentially all the hand traps I cover. You still see two more pause, but I'm gonna cover it later. These are hand traps that I like specifically take out and wanna talk about it. Obviously, I still didn't cover all of them. Like there's there's OG Kribo. Yeah, that's probably the best. That's probably the OG hand trap. Kuribo, that's obviously not in this list, which I don't even think, if you think about playing Kuribo in the current meta, then you, you have some problem here. <laughs> and I didn't including, I didn't include any like um, more arch type, more like in arch type hand trap. Like if you play older formats, there's like Blackwing Kalud, Blackwing, no, Blackwing Kalud, there's another Blackwing. And uh, Bujin Kring, which are just pseudo honest. It's like they're arch type honest. Oh, also like honesty nails from heroes. Uh, Necrods of uh, Valkyries, it just a uh, swift scarecrow of Necrods. So there are cards that's in arch type that does hand trap things, but uh, I just don't feel like really covering it because they're essentially just like a. Uh, uh, their archetype version of this specific hand trap that's like searchable and has additional effects. There's also like some uh, other other hand traps. I think there's like a sphere creeble that was being abused in Duel Links, but not really being played in real life. So uh, I pretty much just didn't, didn't cover any possible uh, creeble variant existing in the game because uh, that would be just covered everywhere. Like the creeble get multiplied and it's all my tables right <laughs> and uh i didn't cover anything that says uh pitch it to dodge effect damage because that's not really like a hand trap in my oh it's a it's a it's a thing activating in hand and stop your opponent's strategy of burning by definition it still is but that's just two specifics i didn't really cover it there's like a couple of them uh like ddd ddd king leonidas and I think there's another one, Damage Juggler. And I think there's another one. I forgot the name. Um, those also just works like that, but uh, I just didn't cover it. <laughs> yeah, Hanatawa. Yes, yes. So overall, let me see. Uh, I think. Let me. Uh, let me check. Probably. Uh, wait, 
Tarik Maxi, Jack Frost. That should be all right. Cool. So overall, I'll put this pile here. These hand traps, I know it's a lot. It's quite a lot. If you have the money, have the energy, go get a play set of each. If you just want to get prepared for competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. Well, obviously, you probably don't need three, three driver, but everything else, right? <laughs> like, almost every hand trap, well, well, the statue and the driver, you don't need a play set. You just need one copy. That's enough because it's like a, 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 a combination, a combined part from the other ones. The real hand traps for every other hand traps it's a good recommendation just go get a place for yourself since they all have a high demand of, of the meta usually or majority of them at least they usually get reprinted quite often in almost everywhere so it shouldn't be hard to even find a cheap copy for like i know the cheapest ash probably just like two three dollars if i remember correct and just getting a place that will cost you what less than ten dollars and but you have a place that just to but you have a backup playset for almost every possible format. Uh, Imperm, I think, is still just the relatively most expensive one that costs like $20, $30 each. But Imperm is also like relatively the strongest one among the entire list, maybe alongside like Nibiru. Well, we don't talk about Maxi here. So uh, if you have the money, just go get it. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, like since they all, like I said, they all have a high demand, their price could just easily go up. Uh, like I saw in the chat, oh, Ash is not even that cheap anymore. Ash has actually cost some um, some money. But I think there's like more reprints coming in, like what uh, the goal here is to actually reprint all six of these plus Imperm. So by the time like that price probably going to be dropped slightly even more. Um, it just... It's good to have like a library of all, all these. I actually personally collect maybe even more than one place of a majority of these just to make sure I have, I'm prepared for any possible format change, any possible new decks that require a different hand trap for, for even to play in the format. So yeah, that's like my big recommendation. If you can, just spend the money. It's a very good investment. The money, it's true. You might be spent, oh, I spent like, what, $10, $15 just to get a place of Ghost Sister Dogwood, but I've never used it. But the only time if you use it and win you the game, you will still feel rewarded. Because the money, the, the, like, it's an investment. And what it comes back is like your winning, your victory, your, like, your top from tournaments. So it's, it's very worth in terms of, uh, investments. The next two, the last two piles. First one is, as like everyone know, everyone saw from all these hand traps, a lot of them, they are like different types, different levels. Some of them even more tuners. So you can really abuse those factors. Like for the current meta, there's like Safer. It's a dragon where you can combo is fantastic because Safer says you can cause any dragon and search a dragon that's the same level so you can come you can safer cost the fantastic or you can even safer cost another level seven dragon to search fantastic which is a different which is also a possible play um teleport spe says special summon a psychic from your deck all the side frames along with ogre are a uh, psychic monster so it's like a very and also since they both tuners this like can be just become a small tuner package for your deck if you want to play if you are doing like more synchro summon or link summons. That's a very like that's a decent extenders if you're already playing these corresponding hand traps. Scarlet Sanguine is another one. It's an Eldritch card and it says uh, usually as a special summon a Golden Lord from either your deck or graveyard, but has an additional part where if you already control Golden Lord. You can spell summon a zombie instead of specifically Golden Lord. And in terms of zombie, <laughs> all the Ghost Sisters except Ogre are zombies. And you're going to play at least one, if not maybe even two different of them, different kind of them in your in an knowledge deck. 
So it's really good to just combo with these. And since they're all tuners, you can maybe just eventually summon one of them out, make like a fiber saline play during next turn. Like you can go end phase when you already have a lore, some like some out an ash. Your turn you just go uh, fiber saline access that bring the lore back. That's enough to, to for game. Just always remember these hand traps, they have their tuner aspects and or their types. So that can be comboed into your existing deck for like some special place, which does comes up. I've definitely summoned a decent amount of Ash in my Eldritch, well, whenever I play Eldritch. So yeah, this is uh, everything I've uh, covered for what I wanna what I wanna cover for this hand trap app. So this is uh still just the fundamental, the most basic thing. Whenever or whatever deck you gonna play for a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh tournament or just play, play competitive Yu-Gi-Oh in general, you'll have to you'll have to play hand traps. If not, some there will be another episodes about going second strategy, which gonna be in the future. But majority of the time, you will need hand traps, and it's almost never bad to just get uh get ready, get your collection or get your library ready. Um, to say it's like I'll say if you go with the cheapest version of every hand trap, like I covered, I recommend that you should buy. It probably costs you like what a hundred, five hundred fifty, two hundred. That does sound like a decent amount of money. However, it's gonna be used in you're gonna you're gonna use the value, not the not the monetary value, the 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 playable value of this these amount of hand traps at any point. So it's definitely worth if you want to get better, uh, if you want to get like some results from like any possible Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments. By the time this video is recording, we're still under the quarantine time, so. For now, you can just start it very slowly because majority of the tournaments should be played either on like online platform like Yu Gi Oh Pro or Dueling Book, but or maybe some occasion they will be like Remote Duel. But if you play Remote Duel, you need the real cards, right? And by the time we finally get like done the whole quarantine season, um, if when whenever events comes back, whenever you go to real events, you need those real cards. So. Yeah, by the time now, maybe it's just a good time to do an investment just to com just to collect a whole library of all the hand traps you can have, and that will be that will benefit you in the long term. A hundred percent, I can guarantee it. Then the last one, <laughs> it's a tease for the next set, next episode. It's about anti hand traps. So since hand traps are so important, right? What's the ways to against it? Let's talk about anti hand traps like call by grief and maybe in the future we'll get cross out designator well that's what's happening next time so if you like contents like this uh if you inter if you are interested in things like this if you feel all the information or the knowledge are helpful and uh, beneficial uh feel free to like and subscribe to the channel and uh uh, also follow my Twitch, join the Discord, and you can also just find me either on Discord or on Facebook if you have any questions or recommendations or comments, whatever. Um, so till next time, I'll see everyone in the lab. See ya. Go get your hand traps.